Hello, and good evening to you, young comic booksters. I'm Nick Gagin, and this is Vice's Top 5 Horror Comics of All Time. I've got my vampire fangs in, and that's all that Vice had the budget for in terms of a scary costume. So, uh, let's count them off. Why don't we? Horror is often considered a junk genre, and comics are considered a junk medium, and so they kind of go hand in hand. And because no one really gave a shit, and no one really was thinking about this stuff seriously, people were able to make great art through horror comics. The fifth most scary comic of all time is Swamp Thing by Alan Moore. The concept of the Swamp Thing is that there's a, a scientist in a lab that's on a swamp, and an enemy puts a bomb in his lab and it blows him and his wife up. But because of the chemicals he's experimenting on, they turn him into a swamp monster made out of plants and bugs. <laughs> swamp Thing existed before Alan Moore took it over, but after he helmed this comic, it became really popular. There's a terrible Wes Craven movie, a terrible animated show, an okay line of action figures made for children based on the animated show, and the theme song for the animated show was the song Wild Thing, but sung as Swamp Thing. Swamp Thing, dun 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 dun. You're a Swamp Thing, dun 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 dun. The fourth most important horror comic of all time is Junji Ito's Uzumaki. Uzumaki is a story of a town beset upon by a strange curse, a spiral. And at first it seems kind of quiet and isolated to single people who become obsessed and then eventually die in spiral shapes or turn into snails or other weird shit. But eventually the whole town becomes consumed by the spiral. It's very much like H.P. Lovecraft, where the spiral might represent evil traditions or cultural things that are beyond our understanding. It's never entirely explained. It's genuinely creepy. It'll scare the shit out of you. It's beautiful. You won't entirely know why. Anyway, Junji Ito, check him out. The third most important horror comic of all time on our list is Charles Burns' Black Hole. Black Hole tells a story of a sexually transmitted disease that causes teenagers to turn into creepy monsters. No one knows why it's happening, and when they finally find out, it's not very satisfying. But oh my god, getting there is amazing. It's all rendered in Charles Burns' perfectly, almost scientifically clean line style. Supposedly, he pencils out all of these little feathered lines he makes to shade. Everything feels so objective and weird. Charles Burns is a great alternative comics genius. He draws it so good. You might know his work from creating the Crunch Gym logo. Yeah, pretty sure anyway. The second most important horror comic of all time is, well, it's one of my favorites. It's Deke Briefer's Frankenstein. So the comic started off as a humor comic with Frankenstein being this kind of like childish goofball. And later on, sales started to dip, so they made it actually into a horror comic where he's still kind of similar, but scarier and grayer. And he's always like terrorizing people instead of being cute and friendly. Also what makes this comic so strange is that Frankenstein's nose is well above his eye line. There's some strange artistic choices going on here, which are really cool and admirable and risk-taking. Dick Briefer is one of the great early golden age comics auteurs. The stories are goofy and strange. Here's one where Frankenstein loses a lot of weight and girls think he's Frank Sinatra and start swooning when they see him. And here he is in his Frank Sinatra look. When you see a really great artist, you see their stuff and you immediately want to draw. And you get that with Dick Briefer and his Frankenstein comics. I heartily endorse this book. It will make you feel happy about being alive and being able to look at art and comics and think it's so much better to be alive and looking at comics than dead and not looking at anything. The number one most important horror comics of all time should come as no surprise. It's the EC horror comics. You know what those are. Tales from the Crypt, The Vault of Horror. They're about four or five. The artists are all great. The stories are all ridiculous. You know Tales from the Crypt from the TV show and the ridiculous movies they made in the 90s. Unique time. Boys and girls. <laughs> they famously have covers of like a lady getting her head chopped off. Really graphic shit. There'd be comics about like baseball team where they make the baseball diamond out of guts and they're using like body parts as catcher's gear. 
and eventually an opportunistic young asshole named Dr. Frederick Wortham wrote a book called Seduction of the Innocent about how Batman and Robin were gay and were leading children into lives of homosexuality and how horror comics were making kids into violent juvenile delinquents and uh, because of it it led to all of these comics being put out of business. So EC was a really special publisher. The comics were violent, the comics were beautiful. The stories didn't make a lot of sense, but it was written for, you know, dummies. It was written for children, and children are stupid. Um, now for me to put my real teeth back in. Oh. I've been Nick Gazin, and this is my list of the top five horror comics of all time. I hope you enjoy it, go for it. <coughs> Go visit your local comic book store soon. I'd like to give honorable mentions to Shigeru Mizuki's Kitaro, the comics of Erie Publications, Charles Adams' Adams Family Comics, and Steve Ditko's pre-code horror comics. Before he did Spider-Man, he did really intense, angsty shit.